want to show another example of the integration between carbon black response and curator. And to do that, we're actually going to be attacking this Windows 7 machine that has Windows Defender running. Let me actually show that that's the case and it's up to date and all that is good. That is uh, fully patched. Let's actually go into Windows Update and prove that this machine has no patch pending. Machine is fully good. And in Windows, there is something that protects the user from running processes with high privilege called the user access con account, user access control. So if I try to run this command prompt, any, any program with the uh, higher privilege, you get this UAC, the user access control saying, you sure you want to do this? And unless you click on the yes button, that process will not be allowed with that with those highest privileges. And I mentioned this because we are going to bypass that. And the problem with this type of attack that we're going to be launching is that they exploit not vulnerabilities on the machine because everything is patched, it's just they abuse Microsoft features. And that's the problem with this uh, sophisticated attack. The attack is going to start by opening this Word document, which has a single line uh, of macro embedded in it. And that's what is going to trigger the, the attack. I installed a standard Office uh, uh, system in here, no, no configuration, no changes, everything is, uh, is by default. But let me actually show you the, the, net, the nature of the attack. The attack is going to be running a PowerShell command. And PowerShell is something that comes in every Windows system. It's a, again a feature, a property, something that... Um, but basically it's going to be uh, downloading a file called mylot.exe from this Kali attacker and the the, the the macro has the, the callback, you know, this is the callback uh, information. Go to that machine, 172.16.120.124, which is the Kali machine. And it's going to run a process from the temporary directory, my love.exe, and uh, it's, going to, uh, it's going to start it as a process, right? But the attacker is not going to be sending the, the, this stuff like that because he risks being detected. He actually is going to launch it in the way that we show in the first line in here. He's going to use the encode feature. The encoding base64, which is what this command below is exactly the one up there, but encoded with base64. Base64 is a mechanism of sending non-textual data over a text uh, channel like uh, HTTP. So that, that simple command turns all these ugly things uh, but in order to obfuscate, to avoid detection, right? So let's actually uh, go ahead and execute the attack and, and let me actually prepare the machine here. So as we see, we don't have any session open from the attacker perspective. Uh, he just has this uh, ready for the guy. When the guy opens the document and execute that macro, then we'll see that a session will be open uh, in here. So let's actually uh, do that. So we just open the Word document. I can have anything. I mean, the macro is not obviously not visible. We can even close it. And it doesn't matter. The, the attacker already got the session that is going to initiate the attack. The problem with this session is it doesn't have high level privileges, not, not admin, not system. And to prove that, if we try to uh, get actual, uh, let me actually go here and get uh, system, which is a command uh, to actually escalate privileges, it fails. If we try to get hash dumps to get the passwords, uh, it fails. Uh, and But that's not a problem for, for even a mediocre attacker. He can actually send that session to the background because uh, He's going to need it. And then what he's going to be doing next is actually uh, using a different exploit. So he's going to use an exploit from Windows local. And it's going to be bypassing the UAC. That, that, it, uh, that uh, pop-up window that I showed you before that, uh, for the user, right? Uh, so now he can use, he can set the session 
that he got before that sent to the background now it's there and now all he has to do is exploit and as you'll see that a second session should be created if the attack is successful and this session has a particular capability because he's doing that bypass UAC he's going to be able to achieve higher level without bringing uh, you know the, the protection of that pop-up window so if we do now get system we'll see that it, it has success it's been successful if we try to do a hash dump of all the passwords here we are all the passwords that exist on that machine if we do a shell into the actual machine we are in there and if we do you know who am I Uh, this, I don't have the tab. If I do who am I, I'm fully capable of doing whatever with this machine. And there are other attacks that, that we can show that gives persistence on the attack. So this machine will be mine forever. I can enable the uh, create an account and give it a password and sell it on the on the world. I mean, I can do with this machine whatever I want. But the point is, this attack that is actually fairly sophisticated has not gone unnoticed because Carbon Black which resides on that machine has been watching for all these type of things let's actually see how all this starts because it, it, it will send a log message to curator that automatically will trigger an offense indicating that something bad actually happened let's actually uh, go to curator and see that and sure enough we have uh, an offense that fired we have a couple of events Let's take a look at those that were sent to. Uh, so if we if we look at the actual event, we see you know some some file hash some some interesting data and actually in here we can see that uh, what can we see the name of the machine the actual IP address that a PowerShell has been uh, actually launched. So we have uh, uh, again as we see as we saw up there. Uh, file hashes so a lot of good good information but this is not you know necessarily trivial to read it's actually a much better way I can actually right click on the on the IP address that is being attacked and I can even go into sensor action to isolate the machine or I can go and search specifically for this machine or I can always go into my carbon black tab here and you know start looking for what's act what actually Carbon Black has. And notice I'm, I'm not leaving the Curator console. Everything I'll do here, I'll do it uh, from here. So in the watch list, we can actually go into uh, in here and we see the actual uh, events. We can sort this by uh, Uh, sign in time, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Notice that Carbon Black has all this indication, and in here we should see, and here it is, you know, the actual PowerShell. And it's not every PowerShell that is going to trigger necessarily on Carbon Black. I mean, it's really, this is it really has a lot of suspicious indicators. Let's actually dive in and to see a little bit more of this. So in here we see the executables that have been, you know, downloaded. We see that everything happened between the, the the Windows machine and the and the Kali machine. That is the attacker. So it's uh, making changes on the registry. That's unusual. It's uh, launching unexpected uh, child processes. Uh, you know, uh, it's actually all this has been nicely detected by the Carbon Black agent. Here we got Carbon Black detected that the PowerShell, I don't know if you remember, that is actually, well, I didn't need to, to go there, uh, that Carbon Black detected that the PowerShell was executed with the policy bypass. Let's actually go back to, the, to our, let me show you the actual command that we launched. I didn't even mention that, you know, the execution policy was actually bypassed and Carbon Black is saying well that's unusual people to use PowerShell eh, but using it like this <laughs> kind of strange remember that we were using get system well 
that didn't go unnoticed either. Remember that we use encoded uh, command? Well, that didn't go unnoticed as well. So, as you can see, th this is really, you know, very capable of, of, you know, giving you all level of details of what happened on your fully patched, apparently invulnerable Windows machine. And also, go into the actual machine and have it isolated, meaning it can only talk to the Carbon Black server, it cannot talk to anything else to avoid malware from, from spreading. I can actually even go live, which means I can go inside the actual machine and I can do the, use here, help, do the commands I can actually do to, you know, I get a memory dump of the machine, you know, get, get a, a, a session and, and similar to what we did, what the attacker actually did on getting a shell and going into the command and, and issue uh, some uh, previous command. So, as you see, without leaving the Curator, I haven't left Curator, this is still part of my uh, integration between Curator and Carbon Black, I can not only be protected, and, but also be alerted and go and see the details and even take some act basic actions to control the damage done by the sophisticated attack.